Hey there, this is Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, which is our last um, about the topic of looping, we're going to take a look at uh, writing nested loops. We're going to talk about what a nested loop is and how it might help you write your programs more effectively. We're going to take a look at a very specific example where we use nested for loops to create the multiplication tables. And then we'll talk about some tips for how you can use those loops a little more effectively. So just to review, since we've been talking about looping in this unit, Looping is a uh, programming technique. It's a syntactical structure that allows you to take a block of code and repeat it several times. And just like with an if statement, a loop uses a Boolean condition to decide when to run. And as in the case of a loop, the Boolean condition has to be true before each time that the loop runs. So what's a nested loop? Well, as it sounds, a nested loop is when we take a loop and we put it inside of another loop. So uh, in the case of our example here, we're going to take a for loop and we're going to put it inside of another for loop. But any combination of for loops and while loops is acceptable. The way that a nested loop runs is that if we think about it as being an inside loop and an outside loop, if there's just two loops that we're working with, Every time the outside loop runs, the inside loop has to run through completely. It has to do all of its iterations. So if we have an inside loop that runs five times and an outside loop that runs eight times, then the stuff inside the inside loop is going to run a total of 40 times because each time it runs, it's going to run five times and it's going to run completely eight times. So eight times five is 40. What are we going to use nested loops for? Well, a couple things. One uh, good set of situations where nested loops come in handy are when you need to perform, uh, simulate real life situations involving kind of two dimensional structures. So, for example, if we were going to try to draw all the squares on a checkerboard, that's a two dimensional grid, and that would be a case where you'd have to use a nested loop. Or if we had a process that required a loop, that we then wanted to repeat, we would use a nested loop for that. So if we think about our game of NIM program, for example, let's say we wanted to extend that so that after the game was over, you could play it again. Well, the game of NIM requires a loop in order to run, and we're going to need to have put that entire program inside of another loop in order to get it to play again uh, more than once. So those are both some examples of situations where nested loops would come in handy. Let's take a look at this loop uh, and how it runs. We're going to switch over to JGRASP, but this is the same code. So here we have our times tables program. We have an outside loop, which is going to run 10 times. We have an inside loop that runs 10 times. Notice that I've given each counter a specific name, because on the inside, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out in that particular spot on my row, I'm going to print out the product of those two variables. And then that's going to be the entire run through my inside loop. After my inside loop is done, I'm going to print out a, a new line. And the reason for that is when I reach the end of a row, I want to make sure to jump down to a new line before I run um, my next set of uh, factors. So just so you can see what that looks like when this runs completely, we can see it that it looks something like this. I also want to run this through the debugger once because I want you to see very clearly this idea that the inside loop runs completely every time through the outside loop. So let's just fire up the debugger real quickly. Here we are inside of our outer loop. It's going to create a local counter variable for our outer loop. And then here we are with our inside loop. Now watch what happens when I run this through my debugger on the inside loop. Notice how my fact2 variable is incrementing while my fact1 variable is not doing anything because we're still in our first run through on our outside loop. So the inside loop runs 10 times in order to print out the entire first row. And then when it's finished the inside loop and comes back up to the top, now we add one to our outside loop counter, and then we have to start running the inside loop all over again. So that's how we're going to end up with 100 times through 
the inside of our inner loop in this example because we've got 10 times on the outside, 10 times on the inside. So getting back to our slides. A couple of tips. A lot of these are skills that you already know because you've been working with loops for a little while now, but try to make sure that you use nested loops for situations that seem, again, like these sort of two-dimensional situations where uh, you would want to think about uh, a situation where you want kind of two axes of um, looping, like rows and columns or things like that. Try not to stretch things too much. Um, as we mentioned at the top of this uh, video, you can use any combination of loops that you want to nest inside each other. You can put while loops inside of for loops. You can put for loops inside of while loops. Really, it doesn't matter. Last point, and this is a style point we've already made before, but it's especially important with nested loops, is choose real names for your counters, especially if you're going to use them inside of the uh, inside loop. In the case of our example here, that's why I picked fact one and fact two for my loops, because I knew I was going to multiply them together inside of my in inner loop. The only time when you should ever not use meaningful names for your loop counters is when you just need them to count. Um, but in this case, we actually need them for an operation, so we should give them a name. Okay, so in this unit, we've extended our understanding of loops to talk about putting loops inside of other loops. We know that that's possible for either combination of for loops and while loops. And we also know that the inside loop is going to run through completely every single time that the outer loop runs. Okay, you're all set.